Hey guys, good evening. What is up? Thanks for stopping back into the channel. Today right here, we got the Rust Belt Mechanic. We are live tonight from the Casa de Rust Belt. And we are here post the Milwaukee New Pipeline unveiling event. So if you guys didn't know already, Milwaukee, each and every year, they do a huge like NPS press release event where they invite a bunch of YouTubers, press release people, media, to be able to go over a lot of their brand spanking new stuff for the year. Uh, that was scheduled back in May, and as you guys know, the country is kind of just crashed down in for the beginning of the year, and everything kind of got canceled. So uh, instead of doing that one, that whole thing got canceled and they decided that, hey, we still want to be able to have these big press release things coming in. And tonight uh, they decided to jump into their first line of their series with their Milwaukee pipeline event. Uh, it's something where they put it out on their own site and it's free for everybody to be able to come in and see. Everybody uh, that got over onto their website and all you had to do is put your name and email address into it and you had free access into the Milwaukee Pipeline event for everybody to see how it was. Uh, there's going to be four total episodes. Uh, tonight was the very first one and we're going to be talking about that one tonight. I'm um, also going to be having a special guest on here tonight. We're going to be having Brian Elslick from How To Automotive here with me tonight he's also another big milwaukee guy does a lot of the milwaukee tool reviews jumps in on him especially on the automotive side of things just like me in the shop so he's going to be hopping on here in just a little bit uh so we're just kind of waiting on everybody to kind of cruise in here and have him get set up but if if you guys watch the event let us know uh what you guys thought about it in the comments feel free to start uh asking questions about what you guys saw if you had seen it uh if not we're going to go in through pretty much everything that they had on the one hour ish long pipeline event from tonight which was pretty eventful they unveiled more things for the automotive stuff than i thought they would at least on the very first opening event so i was pretty impressed by that one mr joshua brandenbergen here thanks for stopping in buddy jonathan maloge Bar Horst, Stephen Doolittle, what's up, buddy? Nathan, lots of awesome guys chopping in tonight. Was kind of hoping for a battery replacement for an air hammer. Well, that is the golden, you know, ticket to what everybody is hoping for. That that one last piece of shop equipment that still has not made it over really into the electric or battery market. I know. Um, I think it was, um, uh, I'm forgetting, drawing a blank, but somebody did a Bosch tool, I believe, a review on one that had some kind of a small air hammer-like uh, thing on onto it, so kind of a weird one to that one, but uh, I'm sure Milwaukee eventually will come to it once they can figure out how to get it to work correctly, but yeah. <laughs> yes, Milwaukee is pretty awesome. What do I think about the new Snap-on 14.4 die grinder versus the M12? I have not gotten to try the new brushless die grinder from Snap-on yet, but when I do, I will put that one through to the test as well. So here we are going to drop in with Brian from How To Automotive. How's it going tonight, Brian? All right. How are you doing? Can you hear me well? I can hear you fantastically. Awesome. <laughs> Good right deal. On. So you sat there, you got to watch through the, the whole first episode of Pipeline, right? Yeah, I did. I watched the whole thing, yeah. Cool. And so I've they had... The live events as, as well. What's that? I've been to the live events as well, so I can compare that. Yeah. That was the one thing that I missed out on tonight, uh, you know, this year. Unfortunately, you know, they had even like all the tickets all sent out and everything. And I was I was all gung ho, ready to go. And I know I, know. I wanted to go so bad. It's, it's such a great time because Milwaukee Tool lays out the red carpet for all their guests. It is an amazing event. I mean, it's, it's a three day event when you go to it and uh, uh, including parties and bands and you name it. It's all there. It's, it's a fun time. 
No, especially with a lot of their new, new tools and things. I mean, you do get a sense of the the excitement and everything from the pipeline that they have tonight. Uh, but it's just not quite there of like, Hey, putting my hands on like the new tools and everything. I always love getting like brand new tools in the mail and everything. It's always great to get, but getting that first initial impression on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, the pipeline event is very similar to the live event, except the, the main difference is you get to put your hands on the tools, like you said, and you have the engineers and, and uh, right there to answer questions uh, right there. So you so that, that's the benefit of going to the event. But, but they did a really good job of the event today. I, I thought so. I thought they definitely did. Uh, the first thing they kind of stepped in on and with, uh, they brought the CEO up into there and he talked uh, a pretty good initial speech and everything uh, for from what they kind of came from from Milwaukee where they went through um, some of the hardships that they had in the mid to late 90s when they were you know kind of slow getting into the whole NICAD game and everything but he did a really good job kind of bringing themselves in there yeah yeah Steve is awesome he's a he's a cool guy in person like that but the whole team at Milwaukee is so passionate about it, and no doubt, um, you know, Milwaukee is on their game with this, especially with the lithium ba uh, batteries. Oh yeah, yeah, this they definitely are. You know, with when the whole difference in the game came from around from NICAD all the way up until they jumped into the lithium ion scene, and Milwaukee just stole the stole the scene in that one they ended up picking up the patents to pretty much everything so anyone else right now who makes a cordless tool with a lithium-ion battery pays royalties to milwaukee and that is got to be paying out massive right now oh yeah it's huge i mean even snap-on's gotten a little trouble with them for, for not uh -huh. uh, paying to their patents <laughs> yep exactly yeah, they own that market for sure. Uh, they, they're, they're, I don't know, I don't know if they're the king because there's, there's a lot of companies out there like you. You represent SP Tools, and they do a great job. And I've seen some of their tools, but but Milwaukee Tools, just the innovation that they have is, you know, it's just unbelievable. You know? mm -hmm. So let's jump in. I've got another screen here to be able to go through each one of the things that they kind of went through here from the pipeline event. We can see. The very first thing that they unveiled tonight was their new M18, the one-inch D-handle uh, big boy impact. Now, that thing looks killer. Yeah, 2,000 pounds of torque. Oh, my God. 2,000 foot-pounds. Now, for the guys who are working on heavy equipment, I have quite a few guys who come in, and they're uh, working with Caterpillar, a lot of excavators and everything, and they're – you know, just out on job sites constantly and having that large amount of power when they need it, where they need it, uh, it's it's definitely key. And then having all the the other creature comfort things that are kind of tied in with it, having this thing with one key uh, and the new, did you check out the new lug nut mode? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Definitely, definitely cool. What, yep. what do you think of one key? Do you use that on any of the tools? So personally, I don't have... Uh, so on the standard ones where you can set the different torque values and RPMs, I like that for my students. So I like being able to set to that, like, hey, every time you use the on feature on this, I use it on our, um, we've got a mid-torque impact. Hey, every time you're going on, you're going to use this one. And every time I've got the RPMs and everything set, it hits about eh, 80, 90 foot pounds. So you got a little bit of wiggle room to be able to uh, click it with a uh, click style torque wrench. So yeah. I use that one. And then I just like having it for keeping track of my tools on the ones that I have, especially if I'm, you know, taking stuff to an event or like a big car show or something, just that, I guess, extra peace of mind. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's a great, great, uh, great feature. I don't use it a whole lot, but I, I like it. No, I don't either. Um, but uh, one cool thing that I did uh, end up kind of using with it, not me specifically, I ended up finding a tool on the side of a road at one point that had one key function 
and it had the attachment for whoever already logged into it and everything. And I was able to call their customer service and they connected the tool with who owned it. They came by the shop and was able to pick their tool up. That's pretty cool. (laughs) Especially when it was like a 300 and some dollar um, impact. So I was like, yeah, you guys really want this one. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like the feature that I do like the feature that you can lock somebody out of the tool. Yes, uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, you just push a button and your coworker can now borrow your tool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> now, the thing that I was wanting to um, kind of see the difference in this one was their battery isolator uh, that they were saying that they were coming along with this one. Uh, let's see this one battery isolator. So with this one, and I'm, I'm hoping that they put this through to a lot of their other impacts and everything, because that's one of the, I guess, main uh, gripes, I guess I hear from some of the people is that the batteries are very sloppy inside of them. And they have a lot of the impact and a lot of the hard hits transferred over from the tool while you're using it into the battery. And it creates a lot of slop. So when you sit it down, it has that battery rock to it. Yeah. Uh, I haven't noticed too much of that unless the tools I drop. I haven't gotten the slot from the, the actual use, but from droppage, I have gotten that. Right. Well, everybody's going to be a little bit rough on their tools. <laughs> right. my, my, my tools that they've sent me, they have no paint on them. They're faded. They are beat up. I mean, I use them daily. Yep. Yeah, I, I abuse the tools quite a bit, plus I've got... Uh, student automotive students that are in the shop with me too. So they're using the tools too. And, you know, they're, they're not always the easiest on tools either. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But I just thought this was kind of a cool thing that uh, they have this isolator that's going to allow a slight amount of movement, but not going to transfer any of the uh, vibrations and stuff that normally, you know, kind of move your pins out and kind of allow the battery attachment to loosen up over time. So I'm hoping that they put this kind of stuff into what they're going to be seeing on the the entire M18 line. Yeah, that's definitely a cool feature. They're always improving their stuff. You know, they 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 um, they have so many labs when like when you get to go see their their facility next year, hopefully next year. You'll see, you'll see all these these facilities where they're testing all this stuff, and it's it's pretty amazing, you know, uh, what they're doing in the especially in the battery labs. In the battery labs, it's it's huge, and they're they're testing not just their brands of batteries, but they're testing their competitors' brands, and and they're making they're making sure that they're one step above their competitors. Yep, they they definitely put a lot of time and money into research and development as compared to a lot of other tool companies that I've you know seen and and uh, kind of worked with throughout the years. They put a ton into it. And I, I think the biggest thing that I'm surprised most about is for as big as Milwaukee is, I mean, they're, they're a pretty large company, how fast they're able to move along with the market and innovate yeah. where I see, you know, just like in a video that I did here recently, some of the other big tool companies like snap on, on how behind they are in their innovation and how incapable they are of kind of pivoting to market changes and things in, in the tool world. It's, it's bad how slow they are really. Yeah, I agree. Especially with snap on. They, uh, yeah, I agree. I, I, I like that video you made, you made and I agree with you (laughs) 100% 100% on, on pretty much every topic you've mentioned in that video. <laughs> now, I know they do a lot of stuff right, and I'm going to have a video out on that too, but that was just one of the worst things that they have going for them is just their their sheer size. They aren't able to keep up with market standards, market changes with uh, what everyone is wanting and needing, especially this year in 2020, how quickly everything changes so fast. Yeah. And the franchisees, the, the, those guys, one guy, <laughs> a good one, the next guy is horrible. You know, it's just kind of exactly. Like, so when do you think we're going to start seeing Milwaukee trucks come through? You know, I, I actually really, I don't know. I don't know if they're aligned. It, once they get their hand to align going a little bit more, I think that's when we'll see them. Uh, I think they need to, to, to improve on their hand to align. And we haven't seen what's coming up in the future. So who knows, you know? Yep. Yep. No, I can agree with that one. All right, let's hop on over to the next one here. Uh, They came out with their new compact impact wrenches. 
So these are set to come out in November of this year. Uh, you've got Friction Ring available. The pin detent uh, version of it is, is going to be in the M18 format. Uh, up to 250 foot-pounds. And w the really crazy thing is 4.8 inches in length is a super small tool. That is super small, but I was surprised that they only came out with 250. That, yes. A little surprised at that one. I think because they have 250 on the M12 version of it. So Right, know. yes. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. The, exactly the same thing. 250 foot-pounds. I'm like, you guys already hit that on your M12 line. So usually you think if they're hopping up to an M18, then they're doing it for a little bit more power. They're doing it for a little bit more, you know, just effectiveness. Yeah. Maybe not as much for the uh, effect of lasting longer, but I guess that could be for it. But yeah, it's kind of crazy to that. I, I thought with the, yeah, for sure. I thought with the M18, they would be more for torque out of it. Uh, I do like their new light setup on all of the impacts. I think they're still that from Mac tools. I, I have a feeling that they did there too. Uh, let's look at a couple of photos of these. But yeah, their their uh, lights that they came that new tri light design was pretty impressive on there. And from some of the videos that I saw during the press release, that they they seemed pretty darn bright. And having that light come from the three different angles above, below, yeah. you know, around the sides of it, that was seems like it'll work pretty well. Yeah, I, I think so too. The way it goes around, I think Mac had a, like a ring light all the way around their their light, but I, I like the way Milwaukee has done it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Now the only other thing that I'm kind of wondering with the tool packages on these is what their cost is going to be. I can see already uh, that I like that seeing they're having the accessories with them. The fact that they've got a boot listed here already for it. I like having protective boots on my impacts. So, yeah, I, I know I did notice over the last two years the cost of Milwaukee tools has gone up quite a bit. I don't know if you noticed uh -huh. that, but they they yes. have uh, increased the cost of it. Not by a huge, but I still think they're a fair market value for what the tool you get. I, I still think they're a fair value, but they have gone up in price for sure. And a lot of that, I think, has to do with, uh, you know, some of the cost of the lithium-ion uh, technology that they've had to upgrade and everything for that one. I mean, to be honest with that one and the fact that they still have pretty much the best warranty for any cordless or electric tool in the market, it, it's kind of hard to, to beat that and then paying that little bit extra. I still see it as a value that's well yeah, worth it. I still, I still think you're, you're getting a good value, even if they're, they are raising the price. One of the things I've always said about buying tools is if you use them, they're basically free. They, they actually make you money. They cost you nothing. You know, just put them to work, and they and they make you money. So, so no matter what they cost initially, they actually make you money in the long run. And the more time they're not working is what they're costing then. The yeah. broken tools. That's what you're looking for. You know, you don't want to have the brands that are broken all the time. Yeah. So uh, I've been using Milwaukee tools for roughly for about three years now. And I have not had to warranty anything. Uh, the, the only things I have broken is basically abuse. Uh, like I dropped that thing off a ladder, you know, or also I put it on, on the lift and it fell off the lift and it broke the battery. But that's my fault. I wouldn't consider that, you know, I, I think any tool would break in that situation. So I haven't had to even warranty any of the tools. Yet. I have, I've also had the exact same luck. I have had a ton of Milwaukee tools and I have not warranted out one single tool. Yeah. However, the one thing that I have had bad luck with is M18 chargers. Huh. I, I have killed three of those now. Really? I, I haven't had any of it is, well, Maybe because I have so many chargers and I'm rotating you know, the batteries out. Because every time they send me a tool, I have a new charger. I have like, I, I'm giving chargers away and batteries away. I'm giving all kinds of stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't know if it might have something to do with it, but every single time that I've had one die, I don't have them plugged into a, like, 
regular power strip uh, behind my box. It's actually plugged into the power strip that is part of my toolbox. So you might need to look into that one. That that could be a possibility there too. I don't know. That's how I have mine set up too. They're in the power drawer of the toolbox. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now let's go to the one that everybody was kind of uh, loving about was the new mid torque impact which I'm kind of on the fence about this one. I was hoping to see a little bit more out of this one. I know it was a kind of a whole redesign for a Gen 2 on your mid tick impact with it. Uh, it did go down in weight. It went up 50 foot-pounds in the torque from what it had before. Still has all the creature comfort, weight, you know, savings and everything with it. Yeah. But I was... I think it's just lacking on torque a little bit more from what, uh, you know, the other manufacturers are having too. I think they, they change it more ergonomically. It looks a little more sleek uh, looking and with the light definitely looks improved for sure. Torque is about the same, roughly the same as the, the previous model. I think they did shave off a half or an inch of the length in total is what they, uh, they mentioned there in the, uh, yep. in the podcast. Yep. Um, they, they shaved off an inch in that one. So if you think about it, though, shaving off a full inch of length, which that impact gun is pretty short, you know, you know already, um, and still keeping the same, roughly the same torque, I think it, they, they did a pretty good job. Uh, time will tell when we get it in our hands and put it to use, you know. Uh, Everyday Fleet Tech had a good question. How well do our M18 batteries retain charge when they are not used? Now, me personally, I always carry three M18 batteries in backup at my toolbox. Uh, between the Sawzall that gets used a lot, uh, the grinder that gets used a lot, and, of course, my half-inch impacts. So I've got three of those batteries pretty much ready to go all the time, and they get rotated in, I'd say, every two to three weeks, and I never have one that doesn't have showing full charge on the battery. Yeah, I, I can't really answer that question because I use them so much. They're rotating so often that, that I don't have them sitting stagnant, you know, charged and just sitting there. Because um, I, I have so many M18 uh, tools that I'm constantly rotating those batteries out of. But um, I have not had any, like, I, I don't, I, I've never had an issue of dead batteries in downtime. I, they're, they're always charged and ready to go. You know? Mm-hmm. That was a good one. But yeah, with this mid torque impact, I, I like the fact that it still is coming with the, the new lights, which I'm a huge fan of their, their new lights. I do like that one. It looks really ergonomic. The front face of it, how it's just split off, looks to be a little bit more compact. Um, yeah, it looks narrowed the tip a little bit too. Mm hmm. Yep, narrowed that one down now. Uh, what I was wanting to compare it to. Uh, was what the one that I use all the time, and that is, you know, from you were talking earlier, I use SP Tools a lot. Well, their SP Tools mid torque impact that I use, uh, this has been like the golden standard for mid torques from what I've found for the last like year and a half. And from even what this one's being released at, this one still sits at seven, 715 foot pounds of torque. So a pretty crazy amount. So we're still quite a bit more in torque um plus let's see if i can pull up this picture here we can see that one it weighs in at four pounds 15 ounces so we're one ounce less than what the milwaukee one is coming in at that is with a five amp hour battery on it as well uh the length on that one uh they are pretty close to the same uh the Milwaukee says it's six inches. This one comes in at like six and a quarter if you're measuring the entire anvil and everything with it too. So pretty pretty close there. The only thing that you're coming out on top of with the Milwaukee is uh, you are going to get the creature comfort of the one key system, and you're also going to have uh, your you know selection of your different RPMs and speeds and everything. This one does have the variable trigger, but doesn't have the the selectable one, two, three kind of stuff. But as you can see, I beat the uh, I beat the crap out of this one all the time too. Yeah, it definitely looks like yeah, it puts it through the ringer. <laughs> 
Yep. Yeah. For sure. Now, do you find yourself using your mid torque one quite more often throughout the day, or are you still using a big one? I, I rarely use the high torque. I use the mid torque ninety percent of the time. But that's my go-to tool. And then the the half inch stubby impact by Milwaukee rarely use that at all. I use the uh, three eighths version of that. Uh, that's the one. I, that's my go-to on, on the three eighths version. Mm-hmm. And so I do use the mid torque um, three eighths um, impact quite often as well. I just use that one mainly because I have more socket options. You know, wobbly sockets and, and torques and all that stuff, the 3 8 version. But when I'm doing suspension work or, or alignments or anything like that, I'm using the, the half inch drive. Yeah, that, that was one of the things that I found was kind of a, a weird fitment to some of the tool lines. And the, the stubby M12 line, just, it was kind of odd using the half inch version of it. It was one of the things where the sockets just weren't the right fitment range for the torque that that one did same thing for that right angle impact that they just came out with having yeah. that one in a half inch drive was just i don't know just out of place i guess i didn't even i didn't even request or ask for the half inch drive i just went straight for the three eighths that's the only one I yep made. i got the i had a buddy who ended up getting one and i i said i'm glad that i didn't grab this because i would just have been kind of a waste and i would not have used it you know, you know, at, it, it's kind of weird. At first, I had like mixed feelings about the the right angle, and the more I use it, the more I like it. You know, it's it's kind of one of those. Um, it doesn't take off every fastener that you try to throw it at. You know, it, it has its limits, and, and because of the, the thickness of the head, it definitely won't get into all the spots. But but you know, it, it, it just like just something about that extra torque and speed. You know, like when you're using it in the engine bays and stuff, it, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I like speed, that that's where I'm really excited about seeing they they put a lot of uh, I guess emphasis on the new speed of these things yeah uh, I was kind of looking for their actual release on their rpms here because I know the SP tool ones it runs at like 2300 rpm and I can see now the we are listed at 2575 rpm. Yeah, so they are going up a bit quicker. Um, the when I did the had the mid torque test on one of the videos that I did, I think the most impressive speed one that I had done was uh, Mick Bake. He had one of the was it a Dewalt? No, I don't think it was a Dewalt. It was a rigid, the new rigid ones. Yeah, they are super quick on those. You know. Quickness is, is awesome, but one of the features I like about Milwaukee Tools is that that level number four, where you rip you rip that bolt free and it slows the RPMs down. It's super handy when you're using wobbly sockets or uh, you know extensions and stuff like that. You're not uh, doing what we call in the shop where you just full bore on with the wobble sockets. They call ride the lightning, and that thing just slinging. It might slide yeah. off the worth flinging a nut all the way across the shop. Yeah, yeah, you lose the fasteners or your sockets or whatever, but but that that number four feature that where it slows down as soon as it breaks free is actually a pretty cool feature. Mm -hmm. Now that's what I was kind of hoping. You know, when we were earlier when we were talking about the D ring where they're coming out with the lug nut mode, with would be more precise measurements for some of the half inch, the mid torque impacts and stuff to have a setting like that to be able to have for newer technicians who haven't used the electric, the battery powered tools nearly as much to kind of introduce them into that. I know they have these small torque settings, but uh, in my testing, at least they're very all over the range for how long you hold the triggers, depending on yeah. that to what they actually torque to. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that vary from like lock tight on the threads to whatever, or rust on the threads. They can change the torque settings, so you know. You know but I think I think having that option where it gets you in the ballpark and then you can use a torque wrench, you know, afterwards is a is a great feature, especially for mm -hmm. you, you know, for new technicians. Or, yeah, the new technicians, when they come in, they are very green to using even air tools. So especially if you 
or one of the guys who throws one of the the high torque monsters into a new technician's hands. <laughs> yeah, they're hammering on that lug like, nut. I was like, whoa, whoa, buddy, <laughs> back it down. Yeah. Yep. So that's pretty impressive to be able to have all those features and that the the fourth mode feature on that one is definitely something that I I think is going to be spreading across into a lot of the other manufacturers. At least I hope so in the technology moving forward. Uh, something that's definitely needed. I think uh, as an old school mechanic, uh, reviewing these tools with all these features is a little hard because I you, you know you kind of use the trigger and the feel. You know the feel and the sounds and everything. Uh, how things are torquing down and it's it's a little hard to uh you know say hey push this button and it's you know yeah you know, it's kind of a, it's a little tricky like i tend to use the, the, the thing on full bore and just you know use the, the variable trigger and you know you're getting in the ballpark you know <laughs> yep and that that's where i've kind of taught the students there uh when they're using the mid the stubby impact most often especially putting fasteners around the engine bay on i'm like hey when you're anything here on top of the engine we're and you're never holding the trigger on the impact portion more than a second to a second and a half yeah, yeah. never more than that and, and that's the thing that comes with experience with using the tools and, and breaking stuff you know you get you got to break a few bolts you know to really know. unfortunately yeah yes. yeah yeah. Now, I know that using like this one, I, I tell them, I'm like, all right, well, me, when I use it on the full bore, I, I'm bringing a lug nut in until it hits the one, maybe the second hit, and I'm at 90 foot pounds. Yeah. And it's that almost every single time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and until you use the tools for a period of time, you just you don't know that stuff. And mm. so, so it's a great feature that they have the options of, to program, like the one key you can actually program the, you know, the, the, the settings on there, or you can use the presets, you know. Now, was there anything else in the press release that kind of stood out to you? I know that was kind of the end of the, the automotive extent. You might be able to throw in some of their vacuums here into the automotive world that would be kind of cool for inside and cleaning up vehicles and trunks and stuff, but... That was about it. Yeah, as far as the automotive, that was about it. Um, and I know they're going to come out with, because um, I saw in one of the uh, M12 pictures, there was uh, some funky looking the fractures. I haven't gone back and looked at them, but uh, there looked like there's some different new stuff in there. As far as the, back, the the vacuums and stuff like that, you know, I think, you know, I think the vacuum is actually a really handy tool, especially when you got rodents and stuff like that in the engine bays. To, to vacuum that, that stuff up when you take an intake off or something like that. So some of these tools actually be pretty handy to have. Uh, was it the uh, the compact vacuum here, the M18 fuel, the one mm. where you could change out all the adapters and stuff? That one would yes. be pretty cool. I like that one, but I also like the M12 one because of everything that they had for this one was all able to be stored inside one box, one container. So I could have this one single box put into my toolbox and have the hose up here, the attachment, the battery and everything all within that one station and be able to be held and not taking up all of my, uh, I guess my storage room and everything too. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That's the one with the uh, pack out that fits on all the pack out systems too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really cool that they're they're making everything to be able to, I guess, fit a lot easier onto the packouts. Yeah, the, the packout system is pretty cool. I mean, it's more designed for the, the construction workers or the right. carpenters. But but I have some of the the packout cases and stuff, and um, and I use them to store uh, nuts and bolts and fasteners for for pullers and stuff. And it's pretty cool. Yep. They're pretty cool system. I use them at home for a lot of screws drywall screws decking screws and everything yeah. and definitely looking into having some more of those for at work for bolts and nuts and uh extra lug nuts and studs and things like that i need to do sure. more mechanic that's pretty pretty cool setup because you can wrap you can mount them on the walls of like your van or whatever yeah yeah it's pretty cool setup they definitely yeah. have a uh, pretty cool stuff now moving forward i know milwaukee's going to be having uh, three more events, and I have been told that 
out of the four total events, there is a pretty good automotive sense in three of those. So I, I'm thinking the third one, I, I'm not sure if that's the one they were talking about. It may not have a, as much in the way of automotive things, but they're going to have a lot more unveiling. What are you hoping to see in in these lines coming out? Uh, the, the biggest one I've seen that people are, are requesting or hoping for is battery jump packs. Uh, I think that would be a, go, a cool one if they can come out with a cool battery jump pack. Um, you know, as far as the hand tool and maybe impact sockets, a set of impact sockets. Yeah, they, they are quite lacking there. They've been coming out with a bunch in their blade line, especially with their you know technology and the steels and everything that they're using in the blades. I wouldn't think that carrying that over into good impact sockets, especially if they you know broke into a good wobble socket kind of realm. That one's lacking quite a lot these days. You're either spending like $100, $115, and they're, it's a crappy set. It really is. Yeah. Or you're spending like four hundred dollars on a really nice set. Yeah, I have the um, Milwaukee Tool wrenches, and I retired my snap-on wrenches just to solely put these things in the basin. And I can honestly say they're they're a solid wrench for the money. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. and um, you know, I hope they come up with different designs and 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 they expand their wrench. You know, uh, their arsenal. You know. I think they, they have a pretty good wrench, especially with their little, what they call Max Bite, where they have the little teeth on it. Um, yes, I, I got to try those out. The only qualms that I had was, boy, even on, like, newer vehicles, those wrenches could really chew up some fasteners if you don't, you know, weren't careful with what you were doing. Yeah, the, Mac, the Max Bite, they do, they do bite into the bolt. You don't want to use them on fasteners that are, like, aluminum or, or like, AC lines. Those, those aren't the wrenches for it, but but uh, you know your your brake calipers or or, or mm -hmm. a water pump or something like that. You know, it's definitely a, a good wrench to use. I use them every day. Um, I, I have no problem with those wrenches. Um, the only thing I would I would say that they uh, lack in is they're a tiny bit shorter than your like a, a snap-on wrench, and that that little and they're like a quarter inch to a half inch shorter than snap-on. And that, that actually makes a big difference. Uh, so I, would, I hope they would come out with longer wrenches in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to see those. Uh, what I'm kind of hoping for is the long-awaited redesign on the electric ratchets. They need to get those heads on the fuel lines smaller. I'm... I'm hoping that they bring that down. That's the you know the only hated part that I've seen so far off of those is just you need to make your the heads of the three eighths ratchets and quarter inch ratchets smaller. Well, I, I will say their extended reach ratchets. It, it was a big improvement over their, their last model, and uh, I think they're heading to the in the right direction. Right, yeah, going in the right direction there. That was. One thing that actually Snap-on has totally, I guess, kept up on in the market was the electric ratchet. Their Brute series that came out 72 foot-pounds for both the short and the long-reach ratchet. It's, that was a pretty crazy move. But the price difference is, is the key. Massive. Twice as much. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yep, exactly. It, it was quite a bit more. But like you said earlier, with some of the things that as long as you're using the tool, it is making you money. And if it's working in a better sense, paying for itself more often in the professional area. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't matter what the price of the tool is. As long as you're using them on a daily basis, they're actually making your money or making your life easier, then it's worth it for sure. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what brand that is. Yep. The only other thing that I'm really hoping to see was this last year they had unveiled the M12 version of the electric torque wrench. And that really wasn't put out for the automotive mechanic sense, more for the electrician, because it only went up to what, like 90 foot pounds, something like that at most, and didn't have a real good range to it. Yeah, I think I said, it was like the half inch drive went up to 150 foot pounds, which, uh, or was it 100 or 150? I'm pretty sure it was 100. 100. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it was 100 foot pounds. And, but it, it had the, 
Yeah, I think it's definitely made for the um, utility service. Um, I think if they just delete the ratchet portion of it and just make a torque wrench, I think they would have a winner. Because the features of how to use the torque wrench were really, uh, really easy and, you know, it had a really nice setup, the screen on it and everything. So I think they just need to lose the ratchet for the automotive um, industry <laughs> and just make it a standard torque wrench with, with, and add the F. The one thing they did not have was the uh, the flex head the, or the semi flex head. Uh, and they, if they add that, lose the torque, the uh, the ratchet part of it, I think they'll have a, a winner on their hands for sure. I could see that, or even coming out with two versions of it. Me personally, I I would love to see the ratchet portion of it. Uh, mostly just for bigger applications, uh, some of the 25, 3,500 trucks that we work on uh, for the wheels and for the hubs, especially you're getting those 10 lug things on there. We are starting them by hand, bringing them in, and you're if you're able to do that and do your repeatable torque and bring each one of them in together, I think that would be something kind of cool to see. Yeah, and also the, the ratchet, the uh, torque wrenches did not have angle on it. They have to add angle Oh, yeah, that's a big, you have to have that. You have to have that for automotive use, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside of that, there's not really much else that I could think of that I was really hoping for, other than just maybe some more torque for uh, ho hoping that we're going to see a new redesign also on the M12 stubbies come out, obviously, with your new three-light setup. And uh, maybe some more speed on those as well. You, you never know. We don't know what's coming up in the next three episodes. So mm -hmm. we could see some of those improvements. Maybe a really nice, um, you know, the, the, the quarter inch version, having a real tiny quarter inch stubby that's like a super compact one, I think would be really cool for inside and dash work as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, question: Do you prefer the the uh, quarter inch drive or the quarter inch or the, the hex drive for a dash work? I have hex drive. That's what I prefer. I prefer the hex drive for dash and interior work, and then the the uh, the, uh, the 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 anvil, the quarter inch anvil for like engine bay and stuff like that. You know? I actually don't own a quarter inch anvil drive one. Oh my God, that 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 tool! I, I own that tool, and that's probably one of my most used tool for engine covers, <laughs> shields, all that stuff. You know, that's the one I use, every, you know, on a daily basis. I don't know. I I still use my hex drive one for for most often for that. Whereas if I'm going something that that one can't handle, I'm jumping up to a stubby M12 three eighths. Yeah, it, it, it you know it's it's crazy how it's all preference. You know, for one guy. Well, I hate this tool. I'm will love it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I just, thankfully that they've stepped up the market for the mid torques because uh, before they had those come out, man, lugging those eight pound, you know, high torque impacts around because you had to have that, you know, in your arsenal to be able to handle some of the big things that just won't come apart. You absolutely have to have it, but, you know, lugging it around all day, boy, that, that makes it bad. Yeah, that's probably one of my least used tools, but when I break it out, I freaking love it because it does the job, you know. You know. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, yep, it was, a, it was a pretty good first showing, I think. I think they did a pretty good job on that one. Yeah, they, 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 they have a class act over there. And like they, they do, they put 100% on everything, and, and um, yeah, their production, everything is, you know, you know top-notch for sure. Yep. All right, well, good deal. I think that's about all the information that we've got for tonight. I wanted to say thank you to Brian for kind of tuning in with us and giving his opinions on the Milwaukee Pipeline tools that were unveiled tonight. Thank you for coming in tonight, Brian. Uh, you want to give some shout-outs to what your uh, channels and things you got? Um, Brian Essick from How To Automotive. Um, I have a it's How To Automotive on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of them. You know, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Uh, thank cool. you, uh, Kyle, for inviting me, and uh, and thank you for Milwaukee Tool for putting on a, a great show and producing you know, awesome tools. Definitely, and we're looking forward to more of them coming out. I believe the next one is September the 10th is yeah. the next one, and they're talking about 
same time and everything coming out at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, so uh, two hours after that, obviously, the Pipeline event, which is still free for everyone to sign up on. If you guys want to see it live for yourself, make sure you go over to Milwaukee Pipeline. All you got to do is put in an email, your name, where you're from, and you have access to it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So get on there so you know what we're talking about when we come into next time at this live stream event. Uh, if you guys like this one, make sure you throw in some comments below. If you guys had any other questions on this one, we can either answer it for us. Uh, I can get a hold of Brian to answer it, or we can get a hold of Milwaukee for you guys as well. Yeah. All right. I we appreciate have, everyone. Oh, sorry. We have to sign information. So if you have any questions for any of us, we can, we can answer those questions. Definitely. And like I said, they're an easy company to be able to work with and get a hold of and everything. So well, they're going to be having a lot of uh good information, a lot of good tools coming out here soon. All right, guys, appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. I uh, want to see you guys here the next time, so make sure you put it into your schedule for September the 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll, go, we'll be going live for that one. Lots of new stuff coming up here in the next week, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate it, guys, and you guys stay awesome.